All right, if you take out your bulletins, do these announcements. Every week at 9.30, there is a Sunday school here, and there is a Sunday evening service at 6.15. Uh, there will be an evening service tonight, so make sure you come out for that. This week, we have a youth basketball night on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to go from 6.30 to 8. Even if I can't do that, somebody will be here, so we shouldn't have to uh, reschedule that. And next week, November 5th, we have our quarterly business meeting, so make sure you come out for that. We need everyone who is, especially those who are members, it's a, uh, a meeting to update what's going on, so please come out to that. Then we have our next uh, small group, which is the adult group. We're going to do a prayer meeting on the 15th. Then we have our big outreach event. Hopefully it's going to be big. There's lots of plans going on for that outreach event, so please uh, plan to attend. If you have any interest, you can talk to myself or Wayne. And then uh, we have a family feud night that is going to be open to both the church and the public, of course. And uh, that's December 9th at 6 p.m. John, do you want to say anything? <laughs> so, December 9th, as of right now, I know, I, it won't make any difference what date you pick, because there's always something going on, you know, a family dinner in your house or whatever it might be with everybody invited. So, just letting you know. So, we're going to have some great prizes. We'll have a good time. We're not put on the spot. You put your five answers down, and somebody wants to give me an answer, like Frank did. The worst thing I'm going to do is embarrass you. 
That's supposed to be my secret weapon. Now everybody knows. <laughs> uh, the thing he didn't say, though, too, was let's, we're going to bring desserts to share that night. Uh, lots of desserts because there, there could be people who are not bringing them because they're from the community. So we need lots of desserts that I'm night. Making, I'm making six. So he's making six, so, but we still should make uh, lots of stuff to support that as well. OK. Uh, I think that's it for announcements. Yep, sure. Looking forward to that. We've got a busy month coming up. Um, come to any of those things that you can, especially adults. Please come out to the small, small group and uh, make sure we all come to the business meeting. All right, Wayne's going to come here in a second. I'm going to pray first, um, and then if there are any kids that are going to go. Oh, uh, Mary. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, yeah, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, as we come now to the time of the service where we're going to have your, your message spoken, I pray that you would empower Wayne. Thank you for his willingness to come up here and do this. And I pray, God, that all the preparation that you've put him through, both in study and uh, experience in his life, God, that it would shine through. We thank you for what you do in our lives and what you've done in his life this week. We pray for those around us who are suffering, God. Uh, we think of the state of Maine and especially that, that tragic shooting and all of those families that are impacted by that. I pray that you would lift them up. I pray, God, that uh, the church would see the hate and the division as, a, as an opportunity to live for Christ. God, I pray that we, we as a small body here but just as your body would show what Jesus would have shown when things like this happen in the world. God, it's unclear to us the end game on all of this stuff, but we do know that we should be living like your son. And that seems more and more difficult. God, we know that we will be uh, persecuted for doing so, but I pray that we would, and I pray that there would be a stark contrast in how we reach out and how we treat others and how we love um, than how the world does. I pray for uh, Lawrence at Harbor House, God, who has this mission to take care of people uh, in need. And I just pray that he would come to know you. Firstly, God, I, I pray that uh, you would work on his heart, that you would have him be saved. And I, I, I thank you for the impact that Mary and Keith have been able to have on that situation, God, and that they, that, you know, Lawrence asking for prayer for, uh, Don is a step toward thinking about you, God. I just pray that when he thinks about what he's doing and why he's doing it, that uh, he starts to think about you more and more. We pray for Don and Pat, uh, both for healing and for um, salvation as well. We pray that you would intervene in their lives. Use this experience, God, um, to show them their need. And we just thank you and praise you for the wonderful, amazing, powerful, knowing God that you are, that when things here seem bleakest, we know that you are still completely in control and completely powerful, God, and completely loving, completely kind, but you are also
completely consistent, God, in this world is going toward this crashing end, and uh, it will be dealt with. All of this injustice that we see around us will be dealt with. And I pray that we would leave that to you. Thank you again now as Wayne comes. Uh, thank you for him, for the man that you've made him. And I pray that uh, hearts will be open to receive it today. In your name, amen. amen. All right, if there are any kids that are going out, now's the time. And just a reminder, we do lock the doors at this time. So if you go out, make sure you know how to get back in. All right? All right, Wayne. Good morning. Now let's pray. God in heaven, Lord, we love you very much. But of course, Lord, we love you because you love this first. And uh, Lord, we're, we're confused. Why? Why do you love us? Um, we're so undeserving of your love. We're so undeserving of your kindness, God the Father. But uh, thank you so much for sending your son Thank you so much for uh, his blood. Thank you so much for forgiveness. Thank you so much for your spirit, God in heaven. Father God, as I preach this, help me preach it. Um, help me preach this sermon titled Holy Hatred in context of your amazing love. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Have you ever heard someone say, I don't hate? Or... Hate is a strong word. Or have you ever read a sign that says, hate has no home here, or no room for hate? A true soldier of Christ must hate. True Christianity is a religion of holy hatred. In Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom is open-air preaching at the entrance of the city. And in verse 13, she says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride, arrogance, the evil way, and the perverted mouth, I hate. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to both destroy both the soul and body in hell. If you are going to fear God, who has the power to destroy both your soul and your body in hell, then you have to hate the evil, the pride, the arrogance, and the perverted mouth in your own life and in the lives of others. In Revelation chapter 2, the Ephesus church had a serious issue that needed repair. However, Jesus told them they had at least one thing going for them, and it was that they hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And then Jesus states that he hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans as well. Paul the Apostle tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, that our love must be without hypocrisy and that we should hate evil and cling to what is good. Therefore, we must hate sin and turn away from it as if it were feces on a dinner plate sitting in front of us. We must be like Job and shun evil. Job lost everything, including his ten children and his health. And in response, he refused to sin or blame God. In the words of Jesus, if our right hand or foot causes us to sin, then we must chop them off. For it is better to go to heaven as an amputee than to hell with all our body parts intact. Psalm 97 verse 10 has a message of holy hatred for those of you who love the Lord, for those of you who are convinced that God stands watch over your soul 
and saves you from the hand of the wicked. The message or the commandment is to hate evil. In Amos chapter 5, from verses 4 to 15, God instructs his people to seek him so that they may live. He refers to evil as people who turn justice into wormwood and cast righteousness to the ground. Evil is despising a person for speaking with integrity, despising the righteous and accepting bribes. God's cure for this in verse 15 is to hate evil, love good, and establish justice according to his word. In Exodus chapter 18, Moses was the only person doing all the judging for the Israelites from morning until evening. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, said, Dude, you're going to wear yourself out along with all these people. You've got to pick some leaders to share the load. So in verse 21, Moses receives the proper character qualifications for these judges. They are to be men who fear God, men of truth, and men who hate covetousness, a.k.a. men who hate lusting after what belongs to their neighbors. The author of Psalm 119 establishes his love for God's law and his hatred for every false way. The only true way is established in John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only true way to walk is in the footsteps of Christ. The only true direction to the Father is through Jesus. All other footsteps and directions are false. Proverbs 13 is a beautiful chapter of contrast, comparing good and evil, showing the benefits and the consequences of both. In this chapter, you see the wise son compared with the scoffer and the one who watches his mouth with the one who runs it. The lazy person is compared with the hardworking, the blameless man with the sinner, the proud pretender with the humble pretender, etc. In verse 5, we see the difference between the righteous who practice holy hatred in regard to his hate for false statements, but the wicked act disgusting and shameful. Proverbs 15 is another beautiful chapter of contrast between the upright and the wicked. And hidden in that gem of a chapter is that scandalous hate word once again. Verse 27. He who is greedy for unjust gain troubles his own household. But he who hates bribes will live. The author of the book of Hebrews establishes in chapter 1 that although God has spoken to us in the past through prophets, he now speaks to us through his son, Jesus. Chapter 1 makes it clear that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and greater than all angels. Hebrews 1 quotes Psalm 45, where God speaks to his son, calling him God, and pointing out the fact that Jesus loves righteousness and hates Lawlessness. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 points out that sin is lawlessness, breaking the Ten Commandments. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, Jesus casts false Christians out of his sight on Judgment Day for practicing lawlessness. In Matthew 13, 41 through 42, Jesus will send his angels out one day to gather those who live lawless lifestyles and have them cast into the furnace. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Jesus says, lawlessness leads to the love of many waxing cold. The Greek word for wax cold is psycho. 
Therefore, as lawlessness abounds, it will lead to more mental illness. Romans chapter 6, verse 19, the alternative lifestyle choice of the person living in slavery to lawlessness, he or she must trade masters and become a slave to righteousness. If you haven't hated sin and agree that God's law is good, then you cannot use Romans 7 as a genuine excuse why you mess up royally sometimes. Romans 7, verse 14 through chapter 8, verse 1 in the NASB. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly, sold into bondage to sin. For I do not understand what I am doing, for I am not practicing what I want to do, but I do the very thing I hate. However, if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, that the law is good. But now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that good does not dwell in me, that is, in my flesh. For the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I do the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully agree with the law of God in the inner person. But I see a different law in the parts of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, the law which is in my body, body's parts. Wretched man that I am, who will set me from the body of this death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God. But on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. In the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 23, Christians are commanded to be like firefighters, snatching sinners from the eternally deadly fires of hell. In the same verse, we are commanded to be like committed laundromat attendants, practicing holy hatred because of the stains caused by the works of the flesh on the clothing of the souls of those around us, using mercy with fear and God's word to bleach them clean. Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19 in the New American Standard Bible. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him, Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a.k.a. abortion. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who declares lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. Another type of holy hatred different from that of hating evil, but a necessary type of hatred that must be in the character of a true disciple of Christ is found in the book of Luke, chapter 14. Listen to verses 25 and 26. Now large crowds were going along with him, Jesus, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes after me, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That's right. Your love for Christ must supersede your love 
for the people mentioned in verse 26. Your love for them must be like hatred in comparison to your love for Jesus. You must prefer your relationship with Christ over your relationship with your mom, your dad, your wife, your kids, your siblings, and your own life. Your allegiance to the Messiah will cost you the loss of good relationships with family, friends, and strangers, which could ultimately amount to your own murder. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 36, Jesus says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to turn a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be the members of his household. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 23. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be as wary as serpents and as innocent as doves. But be on guard against people, for they will hand you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings on my account as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who are speaking, but it is the spirit of your Father who is speaking in you. Now brother will betray brother to death. And a father, his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. Matthew 24, verse 9. Then they will hand you over to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of the name of Jesus. Mark 13, verse 13. Jesus says you will be hated by everyone because of my name. But it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. So do not quit following Christ ever. Like a diehard fan of a professional sports who sticks by his team no matter how bad they are. You and I must eat, sleep, and drink Christ to the day we die. You 20, excuse me, Luke 21, verse 17, Jesus says, You will be hated by all people because of my name. John 15, verses 18 through 19, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. 1 John 3.13, do not be surprised, brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. John 17.14, Jesus speaking with his father about his disciples says, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. 1 John 2, 15 through 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. John chapter 3, verse 20. For everyone who hates, excuse me, for everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, 
so that his deeds will not be exposed. According to John 8, 12, Jesus is the light. According to Matthew 5, 14, church, you are the light. So the brighter you shine in Christ, the more hated you will become. John 15, verse 25, but this has happened so that the word that is written in their law will be fulfilled. They hated me for no reason. Psalm 69, verse 4, those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me, I am forced to restore what I did not steal. So how should we treat those who hate us? The answer is found in Luke 6, 27 through 28. To all who have ears that can hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who are abusive to you. What does Jesus say to us who are hated? because of our loyalty to him? The answer is found in Luke 6, 22 through 23a. Blessed are you when the people hate you and when they exclude you and insult you and scorn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and jump for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Let's pray. God the Father, Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your kindness. Thank you so much for your goodness. God in heaven, please give us the power over sin in our lives. Please help us to be patient with others. Please help, that, help us to encourage them to come out of the sin that they're trapped in, God in heaven. Father God, help us to prefer our relationship with your son over every earthly relationship, driving us to love them even more. And uh, God in heaven, help us to love our enemies. Be kind to those who hate us. Pray for those who persecute us and are abusive towards us. And of course, Heavenly Father, when we are hated, help us to jump for joy, knowing that our reward in heaven is great. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.